Five days of racing, six days of camping, all inclusive. This is the Andes Pacifico. Okay, before we get started, what is this race all about? This event is an enduro competition or a trans race where each day is made up of a mixture of liaisons and special stages. The liaisons consist of truck travel, climbs and hiker bikes and the special stages are time sections of the race where the racing happens. It starts at over 3,500 meters and descends westward towards 10 valleys and over five days to reach the Pacific Ocean. The winner is the rider with the lowest aggregate time of all special stages. This year the Andy Pacifico has 12,000 meters of vertical descending. That's a hell of a lot. But as we travel through the race stage to stage, valley to valley, most of the riders are unaware of the hive of activity that goes on moving a campsite. All right, it's quarter to nine. Everyone's had breakfast. They're all heading off now, getting in the trucks and heading up to stage one of their big day. Now, what happens to all of this? We're moving camp today. So what's the logistics on how to move all of this to the next camp? I'm gonna take you through it. All right, it's all going off already. There was a big tent there, that's packed down. We've got this beer tent to move. We've got the clinic to move. We've got stands, we've got workshops. All of this has to be moved. The media crew have the hardest task. They're the first ones to leave camp because they have to get up to the top of the stage, right down to their preferred spot, so where they want to take some photos. They're the first ones on the mountain. Right, this little village behind me of yellow tents is where all the riders on the event are going to be sleeping. They're all getting ready to head out. They're packing their bags because we're moving camp. So they're getting everything, putting in these big green duffel bags, carrying them up, dumping them so they can get transferred in a huge truck to the next stage. The great thing about this is no stress. If you've got everything in this bag out of your tent, you just dump it here, forget about it, go and do your racing, get back to camp, you head back, you'll be in a pile like this, pick your bag up, go find your number of your tent, which is the same number as on your bike. For me, it's number 12. Hang on a minute. There was a massive shower block here. I had a shower here this morning. It's all gone, it's just a muddy mess. Stuff happens here very quick, because I've got to get to the next campsite so they can set it all up. And there's still boxes. It'll all get cleaned up, it all gets cleaned up. Okay, so there's 109 staff to the dot, but that's not including media. Now, you need somewhere to put all those people. And there's 158 tents that get made every time they move camp. Look at that, a city of tents. But what about all these tents? Who's gonna pack these up and put them in a bag? Because they're, I don't like doing that. All the riders are ready. All the bikes are on the back, four bikes per truck, four riders in the cab, plus the driver. They're gonna convoy 40 trucks up to the next stage. And by the looks of it, they should have left 15 minutes ago. But you know, athletes, we're all run a bit late. Right, this whole convoy is led out by this beast right here. He's the kingpin of the thing. He gets all these 40 trucks to the right spot. Everyone follows in convoy with this. But before they leave, they've got to check each individual rider's number board on the back of these trucks so they can tick them off to know who's out there on that stage. 40 trucks carrying 120 riders. That's only 35 minutes late. That's pretty good. Could have been an hour. But athletes tend to run on their own time. And they don't leave camp without everyone in those trucks. Whilst the riders head out to their day of racing, it is time for us to head to the next camp and see how they set up the next site. Two and a half hours drive down the highway and you come to this campsite. This is campsite number three. And it's an empty field. We've only got a few tents here, little ones there. You've got medical tent, another tent, which I'm guessing is for the workers. And then in this complex right behind me is a shaded area, some green grass. They've got about four hours to get everything ready and built for all those riders that come off these mountains back to camp to freshen up. I, I see no showers. I see one pool that's the size of a sardines can that I don't think 120 people are gonna fit in. There's nothing here. Where's the kitchen? It's, it's not set up. 
four hours. Let's see how fast they get set up. Hey, our bags! Are... These are not the bags. These are the tents and the beds. So they're going to set up all the tents right now, all up in here. There's going to be a, a village of tents soon with all those beds. Right, little update. The medic is coming. Slowly but surely, everything's coming together. This whole campsite is going to be turned into a small village. Exciting update. We're all going to be using these throughout the whole time we're going to be here. This is the ablutions. It's the toilets. It's now five past three in the p.m. and everything's starting to happen. The buzz is coming. Very slowly, but surely, this is going to be a little village. And the little truck nearly got stuck. <laughs> Keeping this chaos organized is these lovely ladies that keep everything under control from logistics to all the riders to everything that goes on and happening around camp. Without these ladies, none of this will be running smoothly. So let's talk about day by day numbers. Four barrels of beer a day, 10 horses for the media, 400 eggs in a morning, 12 Chilean watermelons a day, 600 liters of water, Staff in the kitchen, 13, divided into three teams. Two trucks to carry the whole kitchen. That's a hell of a big kitchen sink. The bag truck has arrived with the goods. Let's see uh, if my bag's arrived. So what they're doing is they're placing all the bags out in numerical order. So starting from one all the way up to 125, which is a lot of bags. All those tents are looking good, they're coming together very nicely. So every single one of these tents has a number, and that's the number that's on your number board. So mine is number 12, so I'm going to grab my bag, and I go find my tent. Number 12 is somewhere in there. Set up tent, a bit like home really. Home from home. That yellow tent of mine. The major, the major, major kingpin to this whole thing that fuels those riders when it comes off the mountain is the beer truck. beer truck is this the beer truck and obviously when they're a little bit hydrated they can grab themselves another bit of hydration which is this beer and it's free how cool is that beer 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 oh my god beer where is it there it is beer So the day started at 9 a.m. Well, let's just say 9.30 a.m., okay? And there's still guys coming in. It is 9 p.m. That's a big, big day out there in those mountains racing three stages. It's insane. So it's the end of a big day for the athletes, but the day is still young. These guys start working right now. These are the mechanics. It's like a race pit. Look how big this is. Everything gets done here. All the athletes bring their bikes. If there's something wrong with them, they come here, drop it off, they change stuff, they sort out their brakes if it needs bleeding, or if they snap a chain, anything that needs doing, these guys are at hand to give these athletes what they want to get their bike fresh for the next day. But take a look at this. It's a humongous setup. So there you go, it's behind the scenes on one of these massive, massive enduro races like the Andes Pacifico. From the mountains, they cut all of us all the way down to the ocean side, to the Pacific, which is pretty insane. And you know what the most insane thing is? See all of this right now? Within less than 10 hours, this is all getting packed up and going to the next campsite. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this is giving you a little bit more of an insight of what goes on with a massive event just like this. There's a lot of dedicated people behind the scenes that you guys don't even get to see. You only get to see the athletes that race this race. If you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit that globe to subscribe because you're missing out on some rad stuff. And if you want to see some racing where Neil actually took part in this race, click just over here. Don't forget to hit the globe to subscribe and give us a thumbs up like, and I'll see you at the next one. See ya.